Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat and today's novel of discussion is Season of Migration to the North. Who has written this novel? It is Tayyab Sali. Look at Mr. Tayyab on the screen. He lived from 1929 to 2009 and he was a novelist from Sudan. Sudan, you know, is a country in North Africa. Season of Migration to the North was published in the year 1966, which makes it a modern novel. The genre is post-colonial and it is written in Arabic language originally. Later, it was translated into English. The setting of this novel is two places, one in Sudan and one in UK. So in Sudan, there is a village called as Wad Hamid. Wad Hamid, okay? So the village of Wad Hamid in Sudan and the city of London in UK. Narrator is first person narration and the basis of this novel is Tayyab Sali has written Season of Migration to the North to depict the violence between Sudan and Britain. As you know, Sudan was under the rule of Anglo-Egyptian rule, which means even Britishers and even Egyptians, both of them together ruled over Sudan from 1899 to 1956. Having said enough, let's begin with the narration of Season of Migration to the North. The narrator returns after studying in England for seven years. For seven years, he was in England doing his research on a writer. Now, where does the narrator return? He returns to his native village of Wad Hamid, which is situated on the banks of the Nile River in northern Sudan. This Nile has been told in the novel to be very important source of people's economy in the country of Sudan. Why? Sudan is a desert. You know it, right? Most of it is a desert. So here, Nile River definitely irrigates the crops of the people, gives them ab agriculture for sustenance and also water for living, right? Now, when the narrator returns to Wad Hamid from England, he instantly feels at home. His initial days in the Sudan are very, very happy. Quote, listen to the lines from the novel. I hear a bird sing or a dog, dog bark or the sound of an axe on wood. And I feel a sense of stability. I feel that I am important, that I am continuous and integral. No, I am not a stone thrown into the water, but seed sown in a field. Did you understand? He feels he's a part of Sudan. He's a seed sown in a field. He's not a stone thrown into the water, which means he's not someone who's thrown out of Sudan into England, okay? Here, he's using this metaphor to connect himself to his country, okay? But the narrator does not know that his life is about to change. How? answer. He will soon meet a man called as Mustafa Saeed. This man is middle-aged. He lives in Wad Hamid only since last five years he has been starting living here. That is why narrator does not know him. Narrator has returned after seven years, okay? And this person, Mustafa Saeed, possesses a wife named Husna bin Mahmud and also two young sons, okay? So please remember the names. The protagonist of this novel is Mustafa Saeed. Mustafa Saeed. He has a wife called Husna and he has two young sons. And he lives in Wad Hamid village since last five years. One night during a drinking session in the village, Mustafa Saeed begins reciting poetry in English. This is very, very unlikely in Sudan. You will not listen people speaking in English or saying poetry. Forget about poetry. They will not even speak in English. And here is a person called Mustafa Saeed. He is reciting beautiful words of English from his mouth. Narrator is definitely intrigued. Narrator is definitely shocked. He wishes to dig into the past of Mustafa Saeed. And as it happens, one day, Saeed arrives at the narrator's house and in the darkness of the night, he begins to narrate about his dark past. So from now, we will listen to the dark past of Mustafa Saeed. Before he settled in Wad Hamid, what was he doing? Please listen to this part of the novel. Very important and very, very interesting. Said was a child prodigy in the colonial schools in Sudan. So he got scholarships for studying, first in Cairo, Egypt, and later in London. Being a victim of colonization, Said vows to avenge the wrongs done to his countrymen by the British. He says that when the Britishers brought train, they did not bring, you know, education with them. They brought guns. 
they did not come up to civilize us they came here to actually you know become they came here to violate us they came here to take our resources he hates britishers so now since he is in their land he wants to you know avenge the wrong done to sudan how will he do it tell me how will a young man a prodigy an intelligent charming man like said do it he will have multiple affairs with english women at a time yes said marries multiple women he has multiple girlfriends you know now these girlfriends of his are listen to the names of three girlfriends and hammond sheila greenwood and isabella seymour these girls are somewhat attracted towards sides mysterious east and noble savage charm similar to shakespeare's othello for instance sheila greenwood would say to said how oh, marvelous your black color is the color of magic and mystery and obscenities and as he takes isabella seymour to his london apartment he says listen to the line again in london i took her to my house the den of lethal lies that i had deliberately built up lie upon lie this is how he has set up his room in london who said okay to attract the women the sandalwood and incense the ostrich feathers and ivory and ebony figurines the paintings and drawings of forests of palm trees along the shores of the nile camel caravans wending their way along sand dunes naked girls from the tribes of zandi <laughs> but as said describes his relationship with these girls was an example of reverse colonialism what is reverse colonialism when the colonized tries to rule over the colonizer here said is trying to colonize over these white women he rules over them he hits them he makes them his slaves in bed in intimate relationship and in other relationships also like you know in bed and outside he wants that these girls should be his slaves and these girls are weak result and sheila isabella eventually commit suicide due to said's misogynist relationship with them this women hating relationship this dominating relationship here what do you see what is the theme reverse colonialism and reconquest and also patriarchy right now but none of this you know his girlfriends are committing suicide one after the other none of this affects said as he says quote just because a man has been created on the equator some mad people regard him as a slave while the others as a god he's saying that these girls regarded him as god because he was black but the other people regard him as a slave because he's a black he does not care his revenge is taken these girls are dead but now something happens in said life it turns upside down how he meets another woman whose name is jean morris of course she's a white woman again and he marries her but as it has to happen jean morris is just like said how in their marriage quote from the novel listen the moments of ecstasy were rare in their marriage whose marriage said and jean morris the rest of the time we spent in murderous war the war invariably ended in my defeat when i slapped her she would slap me back and dig her nails into my face aha that is so violent so result of this fighting and this war in marriage what is the result one day while making love after finishing making love said stabs and kills jean his own wife here theme gender and violence so pathetic for his horrendous crime that he has committed said is sentenced only 7 years in prison after which he wanders aimlessly to different countries calling himself a wanderlust before finally arriving to make a home in the small remote village of wald hamid in sudan where the narrator lives it is here that he marries husna he has two kids okay here we finished with the past dark history of said now let's come back to the present mustafa said's life story storms narrator's present world why can you tell me the connection just like said even narrator was out from sudan out from his country and culture for a long time although said was out for 30 years narrator was out only for 7 but then he is disturbed listening to said's story until now the narrator felt a part of his clan but after season of migration to the north 
you know, he thought that he was okay. He was a part of his clan, but now he's questioning himself. The narrator is questioning himself. Is it all a lie? Do I even belong here or do I belong to England? Where do I belong? Identity crisis. Did you understand? And now do you understand the meaning of the name of this novel, Season of Migration to the North? See, England is to the north of Africa. Look at the map. England is up, Africa is down. So season of migration to the north, that is going from Sudan to uh, England, right? And does this lead to identity crisis? That is what we are discussing here. You know, the harsh effects of colonialism, reverse colonialism, people fighting, even the colonizers, the colonized in their own way, there is violence everywhere. Nonetheless, the narrator continues with his life after listening to this disturbing past of Muhammad Saeed. And after some time, he leaves his village, Wad Hamid, to take up a job in the capital of Khartoum. But soon, a shocking news reaches the narrator. What is this shocking news? Please listen. The Nile is flooding, okay? It's been a year. The river Nile is flooding and it is disastrous. Said has drowned in the river, although it is not sure whether he drowned or committed suicide deliberately. Nobody knows. Anyway, before dying, he has left a letter for the narrator, a letter, and also named him, that is the narrator, as the guardian of his two young sons and wife Husna. Understood? So now it is the narrator who is the guardian of Muhammad Said's sons and wife Husna. The narrator is left speechless and bewildered. After this, he visits village often, meets Husna. Now, during one of these visits, okay, the narrator goes to meet his grandfather, who is usually drinking with his friends and chatting over important topics, etc. This time, he's sitting with his friends. The names of these friends are Bakri, Wad Rais, and Bint Majzub. Please remember, we have come to the grandfather's house. Whose grandfather? Narrator's grandfather. So, narrator has come to visit his grandfather grandfather in his village and grandfather is chatting with his friends Bakri, Wad and Bint. Bakri is a lady and Wad Rais is a very important character so keep him in mind. Bakri is in her 80s and drinks and smokes like men. The group is having an elaborate conversation about sex, about the righteousness of circumcision for women. You should read about this process you know of circumcision which was very common cultural practice in Africa. You should read about it. Now, it is here that Wad Rais shows his interest in marrying Said's widow, Husna. Who is Husna? The guard, you know, the narrator is the guardian of Husna, remember? So now Wad Rais, who is the friend of narrator's grandfather, wishes to marry Husna. The narrator, who has begun to like Husna, retaliates and says that Wad is 40 years old to Husna. Their union is impossible. When he shares Wad's intentions with his best friend Mehjub, remember again an important character is entering, Mehjub, Mehjub is narrator's friend in the village. Mehjub justifies this marriage and he says, you know how life is run here, women belong to men and a man's a man even if he's a decrepit. Even if he's handicapped, even if he has any deformity, a man is a man. A woman is a woman. So Husna has to marry Waid, has to marry Wad Rais. That is what Mehjub says. And who is Mehjub? A very good friend of the narrator. After this, the narrator visits Husna. Husna pleads to the narrator to help her because she does not want to marry Wad Rais. However, unsure, he does not know how to help. The narrator returns to Khartoum. Within weeks, he rushes back to the village upon receiving another horrific news. What news is this? Husna and Wad Rais are dead. After Muhammad Said, his wife is also dead. Not just his wife, the new husband of Husna, that is Wad Rais, is also dead. How? I'll tell you. As Mehjub tells the narrator when he comes to the village, quote, a week or 10 days after you went away, Husna's father said he had given Wad Rais a promise and they married her off to him. Her father swore at her and beat her. He told her she would marry him whether she liked it or not. So the father beat his daughter, who is the daughter Husna, and said, you have to marry Wad Rais. She married, but what happened? Shortly after their marriage, Wad Rais attempted to rape Husna and in retaliation, 
Husna murdered him first and killed herself after that. And this incident has turned the peaceful village of Wad Hamid into a nightmare. Despite narrator's pleadings, Mehjub, who has now become the leader of the village, denies to give Husna a proper burial. She has killed her husband. How can she get a proper burial? That is what Mehjub, who is now the leader of the village, says. Shortly after this, the narrator decides to enter the secret room in Mustafa Said's house, whose key Said had entrusted him with after his death. So there is a secret room in Sudan which belongs to the late Mohammed Said. Its keys are with the narrator and now he's opening this room. This is a very important symbol in the novel. Let's enter this room of Said, this secret room of Said and find out what is there inside it. The room is lined from floor to ceiling with books in English. Not even one book is in the native language of Arabic. It has photos of Said from London, including a picture of his late wife, Jean Morris. Moreover, the room contains a real English fireplace, a symbol of British culture in a place which is situated on an equator, on the equator, that is Sudan. In Sudan, there is a real English fireplace. Sudan is already burning with heat. Imagine, basically, this is a replica of English life that Said created for himself in Sudan secretly. Said belongs nowhere, neither to Sudan nor to England. He was an alien. He had an identity crisis. He was a wanderlust. Now here in this room, he's digging into the past, reading more about Muhammad Said. He all of a sudden comes in front of the mirror in Said's secret room and listen to the lines from the novel. I struck a match. The light exploded in my eyes and out of darkness there emerged a frowning face that I knew. I moved towards it with hate in my heart. It was my adversary, Mustafa Said. I found myself face to face with myself. Do you understand? So this is the mirror. Look at me. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I don't see myself. I see somebody else. So now connect. I'm the narrator. I'm looking at myself. Who do I see in the mirror? Muhammad Said. That is, the narrator feels that he is Muhammad Said. That they are the same man. This moment of misrecognition depicts the narrator's similarity with Said. Like Said, the narrator experiences a sense of alienation as a result of his migration to the north. Here the theme is migration and identity. And this takes us to the end of the novel season of migration to the north. How does the novel end? Disoriented after entering the secret room of Said, after seeing this brutal death of Husna, the narrator goes for a swim in the Nile. As he attempts to swim from one bank of the river to the other, he begins to drown due to strong currents pulling him down into their depths. Like Said, he feels overwhelmed by the desire to give himself up to the river and to die. He wants to die just like Said also died drowning. Suddenly, however, moment of revelation, guys, the narrator decides that he wants to live with tremendous effort. He begins swimming again while calling for help. Lines from the novel. Now I am making a decision. I choose life. I moved my feet and arms violently and with difficulty until the upper part of my body was above water. I screamed with all my remaining strength. Help, help. And we are done. Just the ending I want to share with you. Season of migration to the north indicates how migration can lead to cultural confusion, loss of identity, disconnection. Struck between England and Sudan, both the narrator and Said discover their inability to belong fully in either place. However, luckily, unlike Said, the narrator survives his identity crisis and he chooses to live peacefully. Hopefully. With this, we are done with Season of Migration to the North. Did you like it? I loved it. If you did, kindly comment down. And if you love our channel, subscribe and of course, share it with your friends and relatives. This is Hina from Team Walat. Take very good care of yourself. Our African literature series is going on in which we are discussing very important novels belonging to this genre. You know it, right? Just to inform again. Bye-bye. Take care.